My high school biology students were having a hard time mastering some of the complex ideas we were learning. I introduced them to visual thinking, which helped them to master and internalize some of these complex topics. Here are some of the strategies that I taught them. Thanks to Wacom for making this video possible. You'll see me using the One by Wacom drawing tablet to demonstrate some of the visual thinking activities in this video. If you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the description. Here's the first very simple activity that I would do with my students to help them visualize all this abstract science information that I was teaching them. This is a concept map that I created inside of Google Slides. This one here happens to be for uh, government. This is the um, you know, US government systems and the different branches and functions of that government. It's a lot of information, a lot of abstract terms and ideas here. Yes, you could memorize it, but it's so much better and easier if you begin to sort and make connections connections to those ideas. So this is a finished version of that concept map. The student has taken the terms that I've provided, began sorting them into the three branches of government. We've changed colors, uh, we've arranged things in a logical order, and then we're making connections between the different branches to illustrate the checks and balances. It is the process of sorting, organizing, and connecting these ideas that really helps learning take place. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either provide your students with a kind of list of all of the key terms and ideas that they need to work with, or even better, give them a blank document and allow them to select the key ideas, add those to the graphic organizer, and then begin sorting them out and demonstrating their connections. I always tell my students that there's no right or wrong answer, but they must be able to justify and explain the connections, the arrangement that they come up with with their uh, final project. Google Slides is a pretty good tool for simple concept maps. You can already see that my three branches of government example here is getting pretty full. I really couldn't add much more to this. I like to use Google Slides for review activities, interactive notebook style activities that my students are working on. If you have something that is more complex or you want students to really make it their own, I would recommend checking out a tool called Git Mind. This is a more traditional concept mapping tool. You can do flow charts um, and webs. Uh, this is an interesting one I was working on uh, that demonstrates different types of verbs. So if you're an English teacher, you're learning different parts of speech, not a terribly exciting subject, but something that students need to know. You can have them design a complex web or chart to kind of plot out and show the relationships between different terms and ideas. So here we go, we have four different types of uh, verbs. We can expand and contract them. They could give, give examples of each one. And this really demonstrates mastery of this concept. Students can print this, this makes a great study guide. Let me show you one more. Uh, this is a chemistry example for functional groups. Um, students can take this, they can add uh, images that you can see there. This one's more of the flow chart style, so more right angles, a little more um, linear than a web-based version. GitMind is a really cool tool, 100% free. There are a lot of concept mapping tools out there. I looked at a whole bunch of them. This one by far was the best one that I found, 100% uh, free, there's no locked you know, features or limitations to it. And they also have this really great template library. Everybody loves a template. Um, hundreds of templates. You can check out any of these different styles and then add your own content into it. Google Slides for simple activities, get mine for more complex topics. Now, get mine is kind of a utilitarian tool. It's an outline, it has a lot of information, but visually it's not really the most inspiring thing. I want to reintroduce you to a tool that's been around forever that is wonderful on the visual presentation aspect. That tool is Prezi. Now I remember using Prezi back in 2009, 10 when I was teaching. It was super cool at the time. It was the PowerPoint killer. And Prezi is so much different than other presentation tools because it's not linear like Google Slides or PowerPoint, it's spatial. So here's an example. The easiest way to talk about it is to show an example. So we have this tree here. We're going to go ahead and start the presentation. Um, there's the title. We're going to zoom in. The cell is like a house. Um, and we're going to talk about the animal cell. Now the first part of the cell we're going to talk about is the cytoskeleton. 
which is like the walls of the house. So you can see we're zooming in, we're zooming out, we're moving around, and the student gets to pick the path of the presentation. This requires them to have a very, very deep conceptual understanding of the topic so that they know which thing should come next, which thing is more important, means it's bigger, which thing is a detail, which means it zooms in, it gets smaller. You can actually start by outlining your presentation using GitMind, print that outline out, and that's a perfect starting place to begin building your Prezi presentation. Prezi has been around forever. They have a free version and a paid version. Uh, it's a great product for the classroom. Um, and it's a fun way to, again, make those visual connections and links between uh, complex ideas. You can't talk about visual thinking without discussing Google Jamboard. All the tools that we've looked at so far are limited by the keyboard, but Jamboard allows you to sketch, draw, and doodle using a touchscreen or some kind of a drawing tablet. This is an activity that I call Quick Draw. It's super easy to set up and a lot of fun for your students. You are going to create a template for your students. Each of them will do their own. You're gonna create uh, a different frame for all the different key topics, ideas, terms that you want your students to learn. Let's go ahead and do one together. So here's the rough ER. Uh, this is a pretty simple one to draw. So we'll use the blue uh, marker. We're just gonna draw a lot of um, folding ridges, lots of folds. And then we need to add some ribosomes to that. So we're gonna go ahead and just do some dots representing the ribosomes. And you can see the notes um, that I've added as well. Now you could handwrite those descriptions if you wanted to. I like to use the sticky note. They're a little more organized. I can move them around and you know, I can even draw. So here is the ribosomes right there. Uh, really fun tool. Students have a kind of a, a set of note cards with a visual representation of the key terms, idea, vocabulary, words that you have. If you're interested in setting up this example, I'm going to recommend that you check out the Jamboard playlist that I'll link to next. I'll show you how to set this up so that each of your students get your own copy. It talks about how to use it through Google Classroom. And if you're interested in a drawing tablet like this, I'll also share my review of the one by Wacom tablet.